Welcome to College Football Live on a Friday. We come from Provo, Utah. Beautiful scenic mountain range overlooking Lavelle Edwards Stadium. Some 65 or 70,000 fans will be crammed in as TCU and BYU get ready for the game of the weekend. And College Game Day will be here. You can see almost has like a game day feel here on a Friday. Pretty good turnout for yeah. a Friday, huh? Absolutely. <laughs> so throughout this show, we're going to break down all the games. But of course, let's talk about the game, the big game here between TCU and BYU. And Des, I mean, you look at these two teams, and I think they're known, BYU is probably known for their offense, and TCU is known for their defense, yet these teams are pretty well-rounded. Yeah. But why don't you start with Max Hall and BYU's offense, and in your mind, what makes them unique and special? Well, I like this offense. You know, they're top of the Mountain West, averaging 38 points per game. Max Hall is just completing shy of 70% of his passes at 69%, but this quarterback has a lot of weapons. You look at his running back, Harvey Unger. Unger averages 95 yards per game tops in the Mountain West and he already has nine touchdowns on the season this guy averages 5.6 yards per carry but I think his most most uh, dangerous weapon is a tight end Pitta this tight end averages 13 yards per catch has, has five touchdowns so far on the season I think he's the weapon tomorrow they're going to try to use yeah. against TCU they're very very balanced which makes them dangerous TCU's defense is athletic they like to come after you with a lot of pressure they have 20 sacks on the year the marquee name to look out for for Max Hall is Jerry Hughes already eight sacks on the year loves to put pressure off of the edge I think the battle to watch to really tell you the difference in this game is can BYU establish the run with Harvey Young up the middle be able to get that going to take some of the pressure off of them and all the speed that TCU has. Remember, TCU is from the state of Texas. They may not get the five-star guys that are going to Austin and the Norman, but they get some great, great players. So that's a brief look at TCU and BYU when we come back, Eric. We're going to look at the Pac-10 and also a big showdown between Boston College and Notre Dame. Yeah, Friday. I want to be yelling BYU in the background with the mountains. That looks terrific. Great He's scene. Robert Smith. I'm Eric Castillas. We say thanks to Kirk and Desen. As they mentioned, they're going to be back in a few minutes talking about a couple things, including the Pac-10, maybe a little upset on the board. But as you could see, the game day bus driver needed directions and the ability to climb some mountains <laughs> to get to Provo. It's not a spot they usually go to, but they well deserved their opportunity to have game day in the building. So this is a nice stage for TCU and BYU in the Mountain West. Let's go tail the tape in this matchup. Let's start with quarterback. Who has the edge at quarterback? TCU or BYU? Uh, you got to go with BYU in this one. Max Hall's had a pretty good year, 16 touchdowns against only 10 interceptions. Andy Dalton's a good manager of the game, but I think that that offense is more about running the football. Max Hall going to play on Sundays. How about running back? Uh, you got to go BYU in this one as well. You know, uh, Harvey Unga, he's like one of those guys, he can just be his own blocker. Six foot, 240 pounds. He is a battering ram. He's going to need to be against this defense. Uh, offense is sexy. Defense wins championships. He's got the better defense. I got to say, uh, I got to say TCU in this one. As you heard Herbie talking about there, Jerry Hughes, eight sacks on the season. The team's got 20 sacks on the season. And don't forget, BYU, there are only three teams in the country that had fewer people back on the offensive line. Special teams. I know TCU's Jeremy Curley can return a punt. Curly can do it. <laughs> the Curly Shuffle, he did it last week. It's great. <laughs> how, many, how many young kids out there remember that one? Five people. Not very many of them. Jeremy Curley, though, he's fifth in the nation in punt returns. Also a pretty good kick returner. A coaching Bronco Mendenhall, Gary Patterson. I got to say Gary Patterson, and I think as much because of that defensive coordinator, Dick Bumpus. Dick Bumpus has been with Gary Patterson since back in the Navy days, and he does a great job designing defenses that pressure offenses. You're going to see a lot of that. Tomorrow. Looks pretty even. I'm going to make you pick this game before the end of the program. Now and welcome back to beautiful, majestic Provo, Utah, a site that uh, I think all of us will look forward to seeing on Saturday when BYU and TCU get together in the Mountain West Conference, which should be an electric matchup between two very, very uh, capable teams of being up in the top 10 in the country this year. TCU a lot on the line there. Let's look at some other conferences. Let's talk about the Pac-10. USC starting to get things together. Oregon, since their loss to Boise, boy, they've regrouped even despite their injuries. How do you look at the Pac-10 before we get ready for the big showdown next week in Eugene between Oregon and USC? Well, Kirk, I think, uh, you know, obviously Oregon, their only team right now undefeated in the conference with a 3-0 record. USC is probably the strongest team, though, in the Pac-10. One loss to Washington. 
big game tomorrow versus Oregon State, and then a huge one against Oregon. I think that game right there will determine who the Pac-10 champs are. I've been really, really impressed with both the two teams up at the top, considering that they hit some adversity this year, and they've been able to put that to the side and continue to play football. With USC losing on the road, breaking in a new freshman quarterback in Matt Barkley, trying to overcome that. Now, all of a sudden, he's become a strength. Their defense has been a mainstay. And how about Oregon? Losing their star player, LeGarrette Blunt, week one, pick up and picking the pieces up. They have very, very talented, great backs now, great depth of backs, and now confidence. And they've been doing that with uh, Jeremiah Masoli a lot last two or three weeks on the sideline. He should be expected back. He's questionable for this week, but definitely back next week for USC. How about Boston College and Notre Dame? Boy, Notre Dame just cannot seem to beat Boston College. Uh, is this year the year where they're able to finally have that breakthrough game? I think so. I mean, you got to look at the way Jimmy Claus is playing right now. The offense is on fire. And you look at Boston College. They're 5-2, and two, but their two losses were against Clemson and Virginia Tech. And they got their doors blown off against those two teams. And I think that Notre Dame brings a, a more potent offense to the game. I like Notre Dame in this game against B BC. Well, I, I, I think you look at them on paper, and you're right. Jimmy Claus and Notre Dame have been doing great. Great things. Jimmy Clausen right now has been probably the most consistent quarterback with his weapons of Rudolph at tight end. And even despite the injury to Floyd, uh, Golden Tate's been so, so important to this football team. They've taken control of the line of scrimmage. They're going to get uh, challenged this week. Frank Spaziani, the defensive coordinator, head coach for Boston College, can get after it. But I think Montel Harris could be the key for BC. This is not just a give me, oh, Notre Dame's better. They're going to beat Boston College. Boston College has the ability to make this a very competitive game. How about if there's an upset at all? out there. <laughs> Which one could shock the, the BCS standings, you think? I don't foresee any upsets. I mean, but a tough game would probably be Tennessee versus Alabama. Just because Tennessee, they've had two weeks to prepare for Alabama. They're going to try to match Bama's physicality. But outside of that, I don't see any shakeups in the BCS this, this Saturday. I, I'm with you with Tennessee and Alabama. I think Alabama needs to be careful and respect Tennessee, especially their defense. And Iowa needs to be ready to go again on the road as they get ready to go into East Lansing, a night game that will be very emotional for the Spartans. Eric, what do you guys think? 